Welcome to The Right Now Show. My name is Zach Day, and on the show, we have real, deep, and unfiltered conversations. Yeah. I thought I was going to die. I thought of one thing, bro. Not the things I did do, but the things I didn't do. If you love yourself enough, then you're going to call yourself out. And you'll ever, ever, ever let the false sense of fear interfere with your life. The purpose of this show is to help you gain perspective on life, to help you become more intelligent, and to inspire all the people out there that are complacent with their life right now to get up and actually go for your real dream. So we got uh, Carter McKinney on the podcast today. What's up? We work with Carter in the, in the past with, uh, you know, doing shoots. He's a photographer. Um, what's the name of your business? McKinney Media. That's dope, bro. How long have you been shooting for? About five years now, I want to say. Five years. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a little intro to yourself. Okay. Well, Carter McKinney. Nice to meet you guys online. It, it's Carter McKinney on Instagram. Yes. At it's Carter McKinney on Instagram. Find me on any platform. McKinney Media. M C K I N N E Y Media. Co. So yeah, I met Zach and Jordan. Um, you know, about a year ago, we did some work in D C. It was really cool. The M G M. We did some photo work. Obviously, Zach and Jordan are the video experts here. Um, but yeah, a little bit about myself. I'm PA, born and raised. Um, I've been, you know, doing photography for about five years, photo, video, and marketing work for businesses or people. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. But yeah, let's get right into this pod, man. Yeah, I'm excited. Thanks for having me, and yeah. thanks for coming out. Definitely, bro. Uh, we're in VentureX, by the way. Oh. Yeah, shout out to VentureX in Bethlehem. Sponsored. Terry. Sponsored. Really appreciate it. Um, so, like, when did you know that you were going to, like, become a photographer? Like, was it, like, something you grew up with? Or no, was not like, at all. So, you got out of high school and you're like... So, I've had different, like, little hustles or things that I've been doing. Yeah. Um, I started, like, buying and selling, like, like being a sneakerhead type thing. Oh. And then, like, even, like, painting shoes, charging people to clean them, and, like buying like used computer parts like desktop computers and building them and selling them and stuff like that yeah um and then i did like a clothing thing like buying and selling used clothes that did not do very well never really sold a single piece but <laughs> I, it was still fun yeah and then i got um recruited or you know invited to come um and attend the north Andrew community college center for innovation and entrepreneurship and there they, you know, we had to make a whole slide deck, you know, it was a lot of, uh, you know, logistics about business and what goes into that. And that really just sparked it for me. Um, I, I kind of went away from doing the clothes, but that photography just came to me. So I was in college. I went to college for about a full year, two semesters. And then I was like, this is not for me too much like structure a little bit. And also just, you know, wasn't my cup of tea. So I dropped out of college, and one of the first things that found me was a close friend doing video work primarily, and he kind of introduced me to photography. Shout out Derek Baker. You already know. T say it every time. My guy. Um, and I've just been running with it ever since. Um, just adding, like at first it was just photos, and then I added video, and then, yeah. um, you know, marketing work. It's just going with the flow. So right. That's dope, bro. So you were kind of like you were kind of like a hustler all throughout. Yeah, and my grandfather is an entrepreneur as well. Yeah. So um, you know, a little different. I come from engineers. A lot of engineers in my family. A lot of education. I'm the only. I'm the only. So I'm one of eight kids, right? And me and my sister are the only ones to not finish school. So, you know, we come from a lot of education, and my grandfather owned his own business, like you know, buying and selling. Um, you know parts for like power plants and other things mm. um so you know a little different but yeah, yeah i love what i do and my family does too that's dope bro the one thing that i noticed about you just like from you like walking around at gwa and like how you work is like you're really good at networking oh yeah where did that where did that come <laughs> from and like what are some of your strategies that you take to like i you know just grow relationships and you do it like authentically too yeah i, I understand that but like how do you go about networking Okay, so I appreciate it, first of all, and I just wanted to shout out Zach and Jordan. They got me a great gig last year, again, in D.C. at the GWA conference. It was a great uh, two-day conference in D.C., so that was great. Thank you for that. For sure. Um, and also, um, 
so about networking right yeah i kind of pride myself as being just like a crazy networker mm-hmm. um i have a business card collection that i could probably stack like this high off the table Dang. um and my goal is to open a, a space like a coffee shop and gallery where i could spell out network and business cards from floor to ceiling um you know throughout a whole wall that's my goal and you know my tactic is just you know be yourself don't be shy you know close mouths don't get fed and just go out there and just you know share what you do because you have something to offer people and you're helping them by yeah. being yourself mm. you know what i mean so you know don't be shy you know do something that you don't always want to do and like just just put yourself out there you know like yeah. what what's the worst thing they're going to do say no mm-hmm. so. and uh a caveat have you always been like that or um how did you gain that skill what made you want to do that I would say that I was not always outgoing and like that. Um, I was definitely shy and more reserved growing up. Um, I kind of, you know, growing up, I was not, I was like super overweight. I was not good at sports. I was the only kid in the neighborhood not allowed to like play GTA and Call of Duty and stuff. So I didn't fall into a a lot of uh, Mm. different groups. So I kind of had to make make my own thing. I just focused on improving myself and, you know, growing and stuff like that. And one thing after another, okay, I'm just in people's faces, walking in doors, you know, knocking on the door, talking to business owners all day. And after a certain amount of time, you get feedback. You know what I mean? You get shot down. Mm. People lift you up. You meet all kinds of different personalities and yeah. stuff like that. So that that has made me. Yeah, I definitely say even when I started my video business and me and you first um, hung out and you were yeah. talking to me about everything and just kind of mentoring me, um, you definitely opened my eyes a lot and just like kept pushing me to get out of my shell and try to do different things. Yes, sir. I really appreciate it because um, it just led to a lot of different things, but that's definitely the, I noticed that as well, like how... You're very outgoing, but also um, it, it you give it to other people as well. Yeah. And yeah. you try to empower other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do my best to share what's given to me and, um, you know, always just try to help people and do right. And when you do good business and you, you, you know, you do things fairly, it kind of, uh, it comes back to you, but you also don't have to be looking over your shoulder and all kinds of craziness, you know? Mm. So. I think it's a lot more simple than people make it out to be. Like, yeah. It's actually just so simple. It's just like talking to people. It's yeah. just like actually just having a real conversation. And you don't have to be like... So one thing I would say about me growing up, I, I grew up in a very like Caucasian neighborhood and area. I grew up mm. with white family. In my neighborhood. Yes, in your neighborhood. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah, very close. Only a few blocks away. Hanover, you know, Bethlehem, PA. Um So a little bit about me. I know you guys like to go deep on these podcasts, so let's do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm half black and half white, right? Half Jamaican and half white, yeah. Everyone thinks I'm Hispanic and Latino because they think I'm Dominican, Mm. but I'm not. I'm actually Jamaican and white. Yeah. So that being said, I grew up with my white family, right? And that exposed me to different, you know, people and like I was the only black kid in my elementary school mm. and, and stuff like that. So I have all different kinds of people and businesses and whatever that I've been exposed to in my years of life. And that allows me, my sister said it so well. She was like, I have the ability to be a chameleon and like blend in with any room. Mm. And it's kind of weird, kind of cool, kind of scary. But don't you don't always got to do that. You know what I mean? That's more of like a survival tactic. But, you know, just being yourself, you have so much to offer people, yeah, you know, yeah. um, and, and people want to know your story. I feel like that's the only way to do it is because if you're not yourself, then you're just being inauthentic. And then when it comes to either dealing with a client or dealing with a business partner, it always then shines at, through. at one point, at what point. At what point do you truly become yourself, or is it just always putting up a facade? Yeah. And that's kind of even what Gio, mm. how Gio is as well in his business. He's just authentically himself, raw. And yeah. That's well, the best way to people kind of go pick about up that it. energy so fast, especially in like a professional environment. Like they pick up <coughs> that energy. Like if you're being a fraud and you're not really being yourself, they can see right through. And that. it's exhausting over time. It you is, know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. 
especially when you don't even get results doing it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the worst part because you're putting up a facade thinking that this is the most effective way that I'm able to do X, Y, Z. And then at the end of the day, you're not even reaching your goal and not being yourself. Yeah, yeah so it's exactly. Just, so. And if you're yourself and you fail, then at least you learn something about yourself. Yeah, 100%. You know, it takes it takes many days and nights of doing what we do to be able to stand and, and be who we are. You know what I mean? Especially with you guys. You guys are super into fitness as well as, you know, your creative industries and everything else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it There's so many, you know, it's integrity. It, it's yeah. all those days and nights that no one sees that you're yeah, just exactly. killing it. And, yeah, uh, I heard a quote know. one time and it said, uh, in order to be fully present, you have to be proud of your presence. Oh, there you go. Like I, you understand yeah, that. Like that. Yeah. 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 So like you have to be, like actually be okay with who you are. Like you have to be proud of who you yeah. are. And that's just that's from hard work. That's like looking yourself in the mirror and like, yo, I deserve this. There you, you go. Know? Yeah, that's similar to Alex Ramosi quote I heard, which is confidence oh. <laughs> I love Alex Ramosi, that's why. <laughs> confidence is a stack of um stack of evidence of proof that you are who you are mm. and it's not just saying it doesn't it's come not from just that affirmations thing. that you say in the mirror exactly yeah yeah um but going back to the point of talking about all this especially when i first started out like even charging people i know that that like i'm sure you remember how yeah how um maybe not naive but just shy i was at first of just like doing business because it was a new skill that i'm learning and so i don't want to go out there and just, just try to charge people and then not deliver so that was a big hump that i had to overcome that you definitely helped me get over especially by just inviting me to shoots to show that listen you have value like you need to start doing this and yeah and charging for this and everything and i think that a big misconception even with me sometimes like to this day is like yes you're trying to help people and and all that and you and do good business and be fair but this is your life's work this is your living yeah you have to charge you have to charge your price you got to be you know stringent on certain things like that is what you have to do because you're not just this isn't for fun this is it's not just for fun anymore mm. this is your livelihood this is you know life. What I mean? so you know yes we're gonna do a free shoot here and there or whatever it may be but this is my livelihood this is my business yep. this is how i pay i can't pay my bills with a trade of services all the time you mm. know what i mean so no this is this is a good subject because a lot of you i mean we're all all three of us have like have, have experiences with uh, and we all come from different backgrounds of where we started different and what backgrounds made us different journeys exactly um, but like similar skills like we're in the same industry yeah mm-hmm. um and a lot of people have like that imposter syndrome when they start mm-hmm. and, like they wait can you define imposter syndrome because i feel like i don't even know what that is oh really yeah that's definitely what it's I have. uh because people keep saying it and yeah. I've heard of it for so long. Oh, but maybe I, can, I can if you want. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so imposter syndrome is pretty much um, whatever job you're in, whether it's a real estate agent, because that's what I was, or a photographer or a videographer. Basically, you don't believe that. Uh, there's a different parts of it, but the main thing is that you don't believe that you're good enough um, to be able to do it, and you don't think that that's who you are. You have so you don't think that you're a real estate agent. You don't think you're a photographer. If you're in a room of people and you uh, you got a gig, you're like, I can't, like, this isn't me. Yeah, you haven't fully stepped into the identity yet. Okay. I don't, I'm not sure that I've ever had exactly that. I've been shy or whatever at times, but that's Maybe kind of what that. it is to a degree like even for me there's when probably I like off, mild versions of it you exactly know, when but, i started yeah. off being shy like just like not um charging you're not doing this you're not doing that because i didn't think that i was either deserving of it or um i was that yet yeah it's kind of like the catch 22 of you have to be perfect before you start yeah, yeah. you have voices inside your head that are saying i'm not good enough i'm not worth it um like this isn't i people don't, know, don't want this i don't know if people would actually pay for this service that kind of thing yeah yeah and i think going back to the networking part earlier again i really appreciate the kind words but um there's totally like a you know an intersection between like um you know not doing it enough and doing it too much because when you first meet someone you don't want to just hard sell them like immediately this is my price you know da 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 when's your next availability whatever like showing it down the throat um not that like you know go up to them look them in the eye shake their hand and 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 give them your business card you know what i mean and i have i've printed business cards from vistaprint it's not that much i think i paid like 
maybe like forty dollars for like five hundred of them. That's yeah. pretty cheap. Yeah. But I've already given them all away. So like I have my Popple P O P L. Shout out Popple, please sponsor me. Hit me up because <laughs> I'd be giving that Popple out for sure. Yeah. Um, I pull out my phone. Yeah, you put my phone's down. recording over there. But um, have you ever wanted to start your own podcast or? Do you already have your own podcast? Well, I'm sitting in a place right now called The Podcast House, which is located in East Nashville, Tennessee. And we have people come in and we shoot their entire podcast and we edit their podcast and supply them with social media content. If you want to start your podcast or if you want to get your podcast recorded professionally, then go on Instagram at thepodcast.house and DM us the word podcast. That's thepodcast.house and DM us the word podcast. This podcast is also sponsored by Right Now Productions, where we help you bring your purpose and vision to life through filmmaking. We film events, brand videos, commercials, social media content, mobile podcast studio, and a lot more. If you're interested, go on my personal Instagram at I am Zach Day and DM me the word story, and I'll get you more details. Let's get back to the show. Um, I pull out my phone. You scan my QR code. Yeah. And, you know, you add my... <laughs> I pull out my phone. and <laughs> Thank you. And you scan the QR code and you add my contact to your phone. Because the thing about networking... Yeah, we could get into this. Because when you have my contact in your phone, I now pop up on Facebook, TikTok, and just about every other platform. As people you may know. Even if you forget about me. You mm. know what I mean? So it's like... I love it. It's like a game. Bro. Yeah, that's so, why I think I put Zach on yeah. Zach because you told me about it. Yeah, bro. So you recommend Popple over a business card? No, because you can... Here, give me that business card real quick. So, shout out Terry Wallace, owner of Venture X in Bethlehem. Thank you very much for letting us be here today. But Thank for example, you. if you put a QR code right here on your actual business card, yeah. it can go to your Popple. Right. And then, you know, that has the save contact button. You know, it saves your contact right to your phone. It's so easy and super professional. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Um, and Terry. And Terry as well, again, for the 50th time. <laughs> and, and um, yeah, man, you save the contact. It's also like a link tree. Um, so you can put any relevant links. Like, I usually put, like, buy me a coffee or whatever <laughs> it may be, and it goes to my cash app and stuff like that. Mm. And website, of course. Social I like media. it. I like it. So we talked about your past a little bit. What about the future? What's that looking like for you? Yeah, I'm not sure, man. 2024, January 2nd. What are we looking I at? Love, I love when people say the date and time <laughs> like it's right now. Like they, It's not that for them anymore. But right now, right here. 2024, Bethlehem, PA, January. You know, let's do it. But my future, I'm not sure. I know that I want to always have photography be a part of what I do I really want to get into real estate um for sure um I don't know I always want to have some kind of presence in Lehigh Valley that's where you know all of us grew up but I I don't know I'm kind of feeling a call to go towards the cities man and I know you guys are both big on that but mm -hmm. especially you Zach um yeah. you know moving down to Nashville soon yeah yeah, yeah Nashville yeah, so what's going on with Nashville? Let's turn this on to you. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be staying at a place called The Podcast House. One of my really good friends, Ace Haggerty, owns it. And basically, he, uh, he put a podcast studio inside a four-story Airbnb. So I'm going to be going down there. I'm going to help run that. It's going to be a great networking experience because, like, everyone who comes in, like, they're potential clients. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be running that, like, recording it, probably doing a bunch of podcasts. Uh, we're going to be throwing, like, parties probably, like, every week, every other week, something like that. Just, there like, you networking go. parties so people can come and check it out. And if, but, uh, uh, if someone like Carter McKinney wanted to rent a podcast house, what would that look like? like what does much? it come with? What are the amenities? Dude, honestly, I don't, I don't know the prices. Not the prices, probably expensive. but expensive. It's not like a big house. <laughs> not yeah, the, not the mean, prices. It's, it's a big house. Yeah, I mean, it sleeps probably like eight or nine. So, That's um, good. but yeah, you can either rent like just the studio, and like you can also like go and uh, go upstairs yeah. to like the, the common area, and then there's also like a balcony with like games up there. Okay. Um, or you can rent the whole house. So how does all right? So so how does someone like you? You're you're from this area, right? Yeah, I'm you were from born uh, here? Bangor. Yeah, and yeah. you still live there and everything? I do right now. Okay, so you were born, this is great, great. How does someone that lives in Pen a small town in Pennsylvania find something like this, connect with someone like this, become their friend, and now move there and work for months? Mm. Yeah, I mean, 
dude, it's connections, man, at the end of the day. And I mean, if you just stay in Bangor, yeah, it's impossible. But how did you meet this person? Uh, through an event called uh, Honest Beauty Mastery, the thing that we sent him to. Okay. So I, I do a lot of events, like... Why don't seminars. you tell the people a little bit about that, possibly? Yeah, we did it on uh, Jordan's podcast. But yeah, these they're kind of like mindset events. Like the, the one me and Jordan did, um, it's a masculine event. So it like teaches you the principles of masculinity and the mindset behind it. And it makes you very aware of yourself. And you get tested physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, and it's like a three-day journey. And it's kind of, it's almost like a boot camp. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's it's different than that. It's a, it's a break you down and build you back up kind of thing. Yeah. Method. But, but yeah. talk about, like, how the how the people that attend that exactly. would yeah. find it and yeah. what kind of yeah. people so go it, and where they're from. It's a great networking event because the people inside that room, like, you're going to get to know them so well. Like, you, like, me and you could be best friends for our entire life. But if you go inside that room, like, you're going to be super vulnerable. Everybody's going to know your story. So, like, that event, like, at the end, like, we're all brothers. So, and most of them are entrepreneurs, coaches. From around the country, right? From around the country. Yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> so I kind of want to answer your question, because I know, I know what you're thinking, yeah. right? and I like that. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys are listening, you're, like, a small-town person trying to make it out and do different things, whether it be photography, videography, whatever kind of passion it might be. Let me talk to people here. So, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. So, so whatever passion you have, if you're living in a small town and you want to figure out how to make it out or just what are the next steps and you have no idea and there's no connections anywhere, the first thing first is there's a bunch of different things you can do. But for me, when I started, literally, that's how I met you, is I was in real estate and then I went to do videography. I got on my phone, everyone has one, and you go on Instagram and you look up videography. I live in Bethlehem, videography Bethlehem, video Bethlehem, photo Bethlehem, hashtags, locations, yes. people, everything. And you just start messaging, start messaging like a madman. If you listen to Gary Vee, I'm sure you've heard this before as well. Just start messaging like a madman and just connect with people. Have a dinner, have a lunch, go like have a phone call, whatever it is, just start networking to a degree. And once you start doing that, doors will start to open, especially if you're going after what you're, what you're really passionate about and you really feel uh, some sort of pull to go towards that. And then from there, that's pretty much like the main advice for starting off and just continuing that path and networking and connecting. You hear us talking about it, how important it is, how, how many connections networking has gotten you online, whether it be LinkedIn, Instagram. And there's so many different ways to go about it. And Instagram is probably the best way just to get started. But if you really want to grind, like I'm sure you have great advice too, because I know how much you grinded. Yeah. That. But <laughs> you can go on, you can, um, like um, farm LinkedIn pretty much. I know. Yeah. So LinkedIn, guys, is my single biggest following of any platform. Dang. I have almost 7,000 followers on there. Yeah, I which on that for, too. for some, 7,000 isn't a lot. But for others, it's a lot. Like, just going through life as a young person, a young man, a young business owner. Um, you know, I live in Pennsylvania, you know, near Philly, Jersey, New York. It's all an hour and a half away. Um, you know, as I'm driving around, going to Virginia to see my girlfriend's dad, I'm looking at the billboards. I'm looking at the businesses. When I'm in Florida or Atlanta or Texas, what, who, who made this TV? Who made this? Who made that? And I'm writing it down. You know what I mean? And then I'm going on LinkedIn and I'm following the company. And then when you follow the company, even if you don't follow them, you can, and LinkedIn specifically, you can see who their employees are that, that have claimed that they're, they work for American Express or whatever company, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then you can friend them and add them. Sometimes at a surface level, it doesn't appear like, oh, you don't know this person, so you can't add them. No, you just have to click their profile, you hit connect, and then you're, 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 you're connected with them, or at least you, you have a chance. Um, and even like the featured like notable people with like hundreds of thousands of followers, even them, most times you can still request to connect with them. You know what I mean? So LinkedIn is one of those like old school platforms that everyone discounts. Oh, it's super businessy, whatever. But there's still a lot of great stuff going on there. Yeah, bro. It's a sleeper for sure. So what is your process exactly? Like you connect with them and then what? So once you can, all right, well, there's a few, there's a few things. Let me break it down into three parts, right? So use, like, I have never deleted a contact or changed my phone number since I've gotten my phone probably at the age of like 14, right? And I merge that with my Google contacts. Anybody that you 
message with via, excuse me, anyone that you message with via email on, uh, I also have like three or four emails, right? Um, it'll say frequently, frequently connected with on Google contacts. You add all those people to your Google contacts. You can export that, add it to your phone. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. craziness. And then all of those contacts, put them into LinkedIn, put them into Facebook, Instagram, whatever people from high school, like, Oh, don't duck your head at the store. Say hi, because they might have some business for you or just be a great, nice person that you never talked to. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> My process is is that I'm going to connect with them. No matter if it's the biggest person or smallest person, I don't care. I'm going to try to connect with you. And then if you accept it, it's going to give me a notification. I'm going to look into what you do. You know, like, let me take a step back, right? Let's see where we're sitting right now. Venture X in Bethlehem. This is a business that has tons of different tenants in here. It's very expensive to be here, so they probably got some revenues coming in, right? Mm. And, and even, you know, if... You know, there's, it's still a venue. You could do events here. You know, you could sell them your services, whatever it may be to, to help their business. So if it was me, right, I saw that VentureX opened here in Bethlehem on Instagram. So I followed them, right? And then I go through their likes. That means that they're engaged and that they're active people on Instagram. You don't want to just go to their followers and follow everyone that follows them because that could be a ghost account. It could be old. You know what I mean? But if they if it's if you click their likes and you start going through their likes, those are all new engagements. Mm. Follow all those likes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's how my accounts, I think two of my like four Instagram accounts are maxed out on how many people I can follow. You can only follow seventy five hundred people on Instagram. Really? And Wait, then you what? have to start deleting them all. No. Yeah. That's so I had a I have had three assistants in my time. That can't be and true. I paid my assistants to spam follow people on LinkedIn. You're Instagram. saying at a time? Yes. <laughs> and that's how I've gotten maxed out and that's how I grew quickly. Crazy. Now what do you say to those people? You don't uh, have to ask me. Well, well, to be honest, my approach is that I like to I like to take things super slow, right? <laughs> so if I have an interaction with a client or a person or say someone like yourself, like you hit me up and got me booked for a multi thousand dollar gig in a different city that was so dope, right? Yeah, I could either keep hitting like you know it depends what kind of person you are or whatever. I could just leave you alone and wait for you to hit me up again. Could be a couple years, could be whatever. Or maybe I, for the new year, I'll give you a call. Hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? What are you thinking about for the next few months? Right. Whatever. What are you doing? Whatever. Um, share a resource. Be a value. Give you 20 bucks. You give me 20 bucks. <laughs> I tried to give these guys 20 bucks for coming here, and they literally just were having a fit about it. Out of left so. field. Yeah, whatever. Anyways. <laughs> moving on <laughs> no but yeah that just shows what type of person you are though is that you are like you are always thinking about people and want to make an impression on them yeah. Yeah. and try to make them remember you that way when important things come up you're top of mind and it's not inauthentic either it's not oh gimme 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 no you genuinely care about people and really want to be a part of their life and a part of their journey yeah absolutely but i mean going back to the whole like you know stages of talking to people um connect with them follow them whatever it may be um, and sometimes it's no more than just introducing yourself. You know what I mean? Like, just say, you know, hey, let, like, what I would say is this. Don't, you don't have to go out and talk to every single person under the sun. Focus on areas of uh, mutual, you know, connection. Like, Terry's daughter went to Bethlehem Catholic High School with me. So, you know, he naturally, you know, we kind of had a gravity to each other. You know, mm -hmm. we're both Bethlehem guys. You know, he used to be, um, I believe he used to be a policeman or something of that sort. You know what I mean? Maybe that's something that we get along with or yeah. whatever. Um, and even networking on LinkedIn, back to LinkedIn, right? You can see what school they went to. You can see their previous work history. You can see all kinds of stuff. If the person used to be a photographer and now they work in American Express, you know, as a whatever, yeah, maybe that's good. Maybe maybe they're black. Maybe they're from Bethlehem. Maybe they live in Bethlehem or, you know, maybe they posted somewhere, you know, in Philly that they were in Philly last week. Oh, I'm about to go to Philly mm -hmm. for my birthday next weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely a strong a believer stuff, that. I, I don't know. I yeah, love. I, really I love like, this stuff. This is a man. really good it. podcast. I love networking, man. Um, I was a little. I was a little nervous at first because I, you know, I don't know the the this whole like mic and I'm <laughs> hearing myself and I'm like ugh, but I, I'm here. What's up? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're here. 
And I think it's also going back to your point of whenever you're traveling, like looking at different places, it's also a small world. Like yeah. you don't realize everything is connected. Oh my God, dude. It's crazy. Like once you start following a path or a journey and you're really committed to it. And like I said, you feel like, like, uh, some sort of purpose towards it. Um, things just start working in your favor to a degree. Like you have to put in the work obviously, but once you're putting in the work, you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Exactly. And it's just, there a, you go. it's just a small world. And so there's a lot of opportunity out there. Even if you're in a small town, there is still a lot of opportunity there that you might not be able to see. And it's kind of like that, that clip that you had um, about a uh, red car theory, I believe it was yeah, yeah. about um, basically opportunity. seeing opportunity. Yeah. So it's like, Oh, um, go, like how many red cars do you, did you see here? You didn't see any. Well now if you, you go you, home, you're going to be thinking about it. You're yeah. going to see a ton of red yeah. cars. Yeah. Exactly. So that's Very the same, good. that's the same thing with opportunity, which I'm pretty sure I'm still in the exact quote, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe it'll go viral again. <laughs> yeah, right? But yeah, I mean, I definitely noticed that as well as like when you just have your head down or you're not like, you're not thinking about whatever, um, you're supposed to be or whatever your purpose is or whatever your work is then you're not going to be doing anything but when you really focus on trying to uh, make important moves or make uh, connections then things are going to start popping up for you yeah I don't know man I just feel like the biggest thing about being in this area is that people always say oh it's so boring here you know it's so slow it's so quiet whatever boring you know whatever you are less than two hours drive, again, from New York, from Jersey, mm -hmm. from Philly. I'm from Pittsburgh, <laughs> six hours from there. You know what I mean? I drove, I think D.C. was like four was hours. Say, yeah. Wasn't mm -hmm. that bad? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, take your business cards there. Put $40 in your gas tank. Drive to New York. Spend an hour or two of your time. Do some research about where you're going to go before you go. Make the most of it. Why are you complaining? Mm. Like, me and my friends got together. We made a group called Friends Lehigh Valley because it's our friends that we kind of came together and created a business investment group, right? And we host events here almost every week. Mm. We we found a way to bring people together, yeah. prospective clients or new friends or whoever it may be. We can invite them to our events. We have upscale events. We have, you know, more, like, casual style events, party stuff, business stuff, whatever, <laughs> And we have seven people in our investment group, all different kinds of gu kinds of guys. You know what I mean? Different backgrounds, businesses, etc. Um, I don't know. One man's problem is another man's opportunity, man. You know? Yeah, that's the thing as well. Is when you start looking for networking opportunities, especially if you're in a small town. Even though small town, if you're in a small town, then you find someone who's um, kind of on, along the same journey you are or whatever it may be just exactly. kind of has the same mindset you are then you're gonna they're gonna open your world more and open some more doors for you that you know i met you now how many events have you invited me to like friends the high valley and how many people have i met just through you or through zach or through me yeah. once you find somebody who's along the same journey you are to a degree then they're going to start opening some doors for you and open you to a bigger network because they've already been doing this for how how long and that was kind of my whole goal is when i was in doing social media marketing you were a social media marketer and you were three four five years ahead of me and so i was like oh perfect you're the same like around the same age as me or similar mindset like i was like boom perfect. yeah let's work exactly because exactly. even like for example guys everyone likes to look at stuff as oh competition if you're eating i'm not eating whatever he was doing social media management and videography work and photography work just like me in the same city that has under a hundred thousand people at least in bethlehem you know what i mean and i didn't look at it as competition I paid him to come with me to different jobs. I've referred him business. I have, you know, he's, you know, been there for me, helped loan me an extra camera when I need it for a shoot later this week. Like, and even just the camaraderie of having, and you guys would understand this more than ever because these guys do some hardcore, like, workout <laughs> training stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, just having someone that you can look to the side and be like, damn, I had a bad day or I had a great day or I have a question mm -hmm. or I'm stuck on this. Hey, have you ever seen this? Do you know anyone that does this? Like just someone sometimes just having someone there to, to help you or guide you in the right direction, even if they can't just solve the whole problem or, you know, pay all of your bills or whatever it may be. They were just there 
to give you a little bit of a nudge. Yeah. That's yeah. that's dope. Yeah, all those relationships add up. And they mean so much more. Especially you, when they're genuine. Yeah. And even having that person in the back of your head, even if you don't reach out to them, knowing that whether it be you, I know how, how hard you work, I know you're working all the time. So in the back of my head, if I'm like, oh, shit, like if I just think I'm like, oh, look, Carter, I'm sure he's working right now. Like I should probably be working. Or mm. Zach, if, yeah. he's, if he's if he's at the gym, yeah, but at the same time, drive, yeah, yes. But I, that's what I mean. Not really competitive. It's like if I'm unmotivated and I need some sort of motivation, I'm like, oh, look how hard he's working. I'm impressed. Like I want to want to be able to do that as well. Yeah, I feel like it's all about balance because I even have siblings as well that like. You know, during normal hours, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, or for me, it's like 9 to 7, Monday through Saturday. Those hours, for the most part, don't call me unless it's like an emergency or whatever it may be. But at the same time, if you do call me, I could pick it up if I'm available because I make my own schedule. I have my own stuff. You know what I mean? As long as I'm getting my things done. Um, But yeah, like... To a certain degree, like wake up at a reasonable time, make sure that you're at the desk or doing something, you know, productive by 9 a.m. Well, whatever your hours are, but mine are 9 to 7, Monday through Saturday. So Sunday would be my day off. No, I'm not going to do a shoot unless it's like a reasonable amount above ticket price on Sunday. No. Or it's during holidays. Yeah, let's get the money. You feel me? But, you know, during those hours, put your phone on D&D or maybe don't. But it's all about boundaries and balance. You know what I mean? Mm. You could totally, you, you know. should get up by 9 a.m. and put your phone on Do Not Disturb. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. To each their own. Everyone has their thing. But, you know, I don't know. Everything's about balance. Yeah, what is it like your daily grind in the office? Like, obviously, you're going out and shoots. But, like, how much time are you spending networking, like, every day? And, like, what are the other things that you're doing? So, I would say that if you look at it like that... It, it's not exactly I can't say that it's like that like it's not the, what, same the way that I would yeah. say it is like you to to start a business you don't just stop life and fucking make your LLC do your business license your you know insurance this and that da, da, da. you don't do you don't just stop and do that it, it's a process it's a little here and there with networking it's the same way if I'm going to New York City to visit my sister in Brooklyn then maybe I should stop at, you know, the top five coffee shops on Google and leave a stack of business cards. Or, you know, if I see someone with a camera, hey, I'm a photographer too, you know, let's be friends. You know what I mean? Like, whatever it may be. Like, And those are things that you yeah. end up realizing, like, if you, if you do something like that, how small of a world it is. Like, that, like, I can't tell you how many times I've either been to New York shooting a YouTube video or doing something that i'm aligned with and i've seen someone i know or i've made a new connection or something along those lines just because like i just feel like it was right place right time i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing i'm where i'm supposed to be yeah exactly so it's not as much like well my day my day-to-day would be you know waking up i like to see my girlfriend off to work she usually leaves for work i would say like eight eight around eight a.m so i like to make her breakfast and then you know I, a lot of my work is from home or out in the field, you know what I mean? Like traveling around, like I'm here today. Um, but yeah, so a lot of work at my desk. Um, I have a big monitor and it's like curved and all that craziness. Um, but I mean, on my free time, man, it's good to kind of like my, my stack of business cards that I'm telling you about. It's crazy. I, I, I collect business cards. I love it. You know what I mean? Um, I can look back and see, you know, my old business card. I have my mom's business card. I have all kinds of craziness. I can go through, if I'm having an event and I need everyone that I can get there because I'm struggling to sell tickets or whatever it may be, I literally just take my business cards, make like four stacks of them, right? And then I punch their email into Gmail and I'm sending hundreds of freaking emails to people inviting them to my event. Or, you know, I'm just combing through them oh no no this one uh, oh, okay boom this is perfect i know this person needs this or oh boom i just heard this person got a promotion okay boom i know this person just moved companies okay boom you know what i mean so it, it's networking and just being productive or whatever 
it's very much like yeah it's meticulous like it, you have to be patient to do that like, yeah not a lot of people think about what you just what you just said yeah so it, it's it's very much just like filling your empty time with stuff that could be good like while you're taking a shit message someone that you forgot to message or call someone and if you tell them you're gonna send them your website or something actually send it and make it good use chat gbt and then put your personal touch on it have someone check it and then send it you know what i mean like it's not that hard yeah all those little things just add up it's just little things here yeah. and there yeah that's yeah. why i really appreciate learning from you because of all those little tricks and not necessarily how hard you work but how smart you work i should say yeah because you what you said earlier about working hard makes your luck or whatever working smart and, and efficiently makes your luck mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah because it's not because if if i start punching this freaking table my fist is gonna start fucking hurting mm -hmm. right but if i take like a tool and smash through this table then it's gonna break you know what i mean so it's not it's not exactly how hard shout out to venture x shout out to venture x <laughs> i'm not gonna break your table but the point is working hard that whole grind work hard culture like do something until you know your fist is bleeding no find a way to to streamline yeah to to make more efficient in 2024 let's find a way to be more you know efficient and balanced and healthy and you know what i mean yeah, yeah i mean that's what this is right here yeah that's why we're doing it yeah so we can you know pick each other's brains and can give it out to the world give yeah. out value and another thing real quick i gotta talk about it because i'm huge on this yeah is referrals man referrals referrals share what your people are doing spend money within your circle and small business and stuff like that like yeah it's a trend but like keep your dollars within your community even if the person might not deliver it as fast or whatever it may be you know what i mean like I, on my website, I have a page that is called resources. It has my personal budget that I made a duplicate of that people can download and, and punch, you know, uh, you know, create a budget. You know what I mean? Because as a young person paying their own bills now for a few years, it, it's really difficult, you know, to navigate all your expenses and yeah. where your money goes. Like I was making $10,000 a month pissing my money away. You know what I mean? Not saving shit. So... You know, use a budget. Stay true to it. Look at actually go onto your website, go onto your <laughs> bank's website, and pull out three to six months of bank statements and actually look through that shit. You know what I mean? And see where your money is going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you when you look at life like a like a game to a degree and just kind of look at all your stats and like even like with the bank statements things like I just feel like that's the that's the most effective way to be able to streamline things and fix things and. If you really just look at your game like or look at your life like a game and try to max out all your stats and try to do whatever it is like i'm sure you probably know you know tosh.0 oh? yeah you know how he has a crazy setup for his um there's just someone else walking in oh, okay you know how he has a crazy like setup for his life for his um an excel sheet or i actually i kind of smiled at you like i knew what you were talking about i've definitely heard of him but i don't really know oh okay well <laughs> Well, anyway, th like I was just uh, agreeing with your idea of basically looking at um, at your progress and what you've done and learning from it, learning from yourself. Like look back at what you've done, whether it's tangible, intangible, or whatever, and start writing things pivot, down. Yeah, pivot make a plan, it. and that's the thing is like we we use math equations a lot to figure out math problems, but the most complicated problems in our life we won't even write down. <laughs> Exactly. And think we can just deal with all, with yeah, all of it in our that's head. Smart, yeah. And so it's like sometimes you just got to take a step back and break down everything in your life and all the different aspects, whether your family or your business or your relationships or how you're doing emotionally, how you're doing mentally, all these different things and see what's not working for your best interest and what's not um, improving your life. Yeah, exactly, man. Like I would say just, you know, one of the biggest things for me, maybe I'm just talking louder. But, <laughs> but, um, I would say like, if you have a family of, you know, 10, a big family like me, you know, 10 plus people go through and, and, and start your week off by texting everyone. Good morning. Start your week off. Hey, how are you doing this week? Hey, you know, how was your holiday? Hey, what are you thinking about? Whatever. And, and when you're doing business, you know, whether you have a point of, I'm getting a little nerdy. 
even if you have a point of sale system, just a list of your phone contacts, whatever, go through that big list of contacts. Look through it. Oh, wow, I forgot about this person from three years ago that fucked me over. Oh, but I see they're doing well. Let's not be all personal and stuff. Hey, how are you doing? I know this happened, but I think you're super cool. Let's make each other some money this year. You know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah, I actually needed this podcast. Well, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. This is what I need. You got my number. This, Call this is me, man. Back, bro. This is yeah. Back. Let's Which do part? it, man. What? Which part? Uh, I would say just uh, networking. Networking. Yeah, okay. I would also call Lead it like guerrilla guerrilla marketing in a way. Yeah, because like guerrilla marketing, G U G U E R I L L A, guerrilla marketing. Like for example, Gary V. Like, where do people's eyes go when you're sitting at the longest red light in your city? You're from the city. You know which the longest red lights are. Go to that. <laughs> see where people's eyes would naturally sit, and put a fucking sign there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like shit like that. Yeah. That's the, just just being smart. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I see you got a billboard now. I had a billboard for a week. It's now done. Oh unfortunately. really? Unfortunately, yeah. Oh, it was, it was, last I didn't know day it was like that. Yeah. It was only okay. for a week. It was like eight hundred bucks for the week. Okay. The last so. day was yesterday today right sunday i think today's okay. tuesday yeah 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 crazy but it was cool yeah i got one for me one for my girl and no i didn't just flex and hey 800 each no <laughs> i i i sometimes i do a trade of services i, I you know and i that's what uh, networking helps with networking yeah so you know i the the billboard company i got in conversation with them you know they were talking about some stuff and i was like fuck it closed mouths don't get fed so hey what's up do you have i'm in your face right now we're talking so i'm a photographer do you guys have any special happenings or events happening in the next few months so i said and they were like yeah oh my god yeah we have this open house oh whatever so i came in i shot their open house i networked with every single person in there Mm -hmm. you know and i ended up quoting them like you know thirteen hundred dollars to do a tiktok video and a photo shoot for a few hours and that resulted me getting two billboards for a week one for my girlfriend and one for me yeah so it's not and it was superficial when you do a trade of services People do that. This company sent me a trade agreement, legally drafted and, and, and uh, you know, reviewed. Um, and, and, you know, it was a legal document. Legally binding. Yeah, it's a legal document that, you know, McKinney Media LLC gives, you know, this much, these deliverables valued at this amount, use it by, you know, New Year's of, you know, January 1st, and then it expires. Right. And I honestly think sometimes um, doing a trade for value builds a relationship more than just doing money for service. Yeah, because maybe they didn't have the budget. You know what I mean? But maybe they have... Exactly. Like, like uh, for example, the billboard company. They have a lot of vacancy since COVID. Since COVID, there's a lot of vacancy in the billboards. That doesn't mean that the boards are not still there and that people are not still driving on the highway and stuff like that. So maybe make a deal with them. You know what I mean? Maybe they just don't, you know, need you so bad that they're going to throw cash at you. Or even like the local chamber of commerce. You feel me? When I first got started, the way that I got my start in my portfolio was that during COVID, the Chamber of Commerce had nothing on their website for COVID, not a word. So I was like, hey, what can we do to get some COVID related content on your site? Because like, you're not even talking about it. What's going on here? Is anyone home? So I pitched them on doing a five video series, right? They gave me access to five restaurants and then I did one big video that included all of them. That gave me great portfolio work and then i gave chamber of commerce you know memberships for a year for like three hundred dollars i gave them out to everyone i was fucking meeting bro hey you're just getting started in business join the mm-hmm. chamber of commerce mm-hmm. i got free credit just tell them i yeah. sent you you feel me trade of services is cool yeah. yeah add value yeah and that's honestly like i always joke around and say that to you because i learned that from you and like you said, those the billboard company, they might not have had the budget to afford those TikToks, but it was more valuable for them. And the billboards to them, maybe not necessarily not valuable, but that was kind of their their commodity, and that's what they had to yeah, offer. Yeah, like, I, I and don't for see... for you, that was very valuable. So I think that's, like, a very, very um, smart way to go about things, especially when you're talking to someone with higher value of you, higher net worth that you're trying to conduct business with or introduce learn about them study them figure out what's going on in their life because everybody has 
uh, not necessarily a weak point, but everybody has something where you can help. Yes, an area that they need help with, a problem, if you will. A problem um, to solve, exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, man, like maybe not everyone has a thousand dollars for your project or whatever your rate is, but maybe they have a tool or a connection or whatever it may be. And you can totally put certain That's things big. like that in writing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and enforce that and do it and be professional. That's okay. Next question. What do you want? What do I want? What do you want? Besides you and T. I want freedom. Freedom of time, freedom of location, and freedom of finances. We're going to be talking about our goals for 2024. So, you go first. I don't think anybody cares, man. Yeah, they do. That's why they're listening to you right now. My goals for 2024? Intentions, goals, whatever you want to talk about. I man. just want to become the most disciplined version of myself, and I think everything after that will take care of itself. It's that simple. Pretty precise. Yeah. Cody McKinney? You're next. Okay. So my goals for 2024, I, I always think in threes for some reason. Hmm. Um, I would say <laughs> one would be... Getting opening up a storefront. Let's do it this year, 2024. Y'all Let's will be watching go, this fucking video. Let's go. And I'm opening up a fucking storefront. It's time. What's up? Stop no playing. more excuses. Stop playing. Storefront. Home. And that's heavy. <laughs> and <laughs> we're not playing 2024. And uh travel outside the country for the first fucking time. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Like, bro, if I buy a home, Let's open go. up a storefront, and travel to Jamaica this year, it's lit for me. Just know that. That's fine. I'm definitely adding. We got one. mad cameras. One, two, three, yeah. four. Bow, I'm having bow, a great bow, time. Bow. Yeah. bow. 2024, January, Bethlehem, PA. Right now, show. It's lit. What up? Fire. Right now. Fire. I'm definitely still. This is, I'm so hyped. <laughs> and we got UNT coming. Yeah, and we're about to get food. It's about to be like $100. Wait, is it but coming it's cool. here? No. <laughs> it's, it's not too far. It's right down the block. All right. Um, so, my goals for 2024, going into 2024, are to uh, definitely touch 10000 a month financial, financial wise. Uh, I'm going to steal a travel one. I'm going to travel to. I'll say, I'll say outside the U.S. as well, because I've only been to Mexico when I was a baby. Um, Where outside the U.S.? Give me a little more. Europe. Okay, give me a little more than that. Italy, Spain. Okay. Around Uh, there. Okay, Italy. Go Greece. Yeah, so... Santorini, Greece. Morocco. Yeah, yeah. Dude. I'll get get a little bit more. Are you you still going? Um, Let's see, one more. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't say, it, you don't. All get right, it. so you Italy, it, you don't Italy, ten k a month. Ten k a month. But what are you? So, so Jordan, talk. To how me. much? How much per week is ten k a month? How many weeks are in a month? Twenty five hundred. No, no, no. Wait. How many? How many weeks are in a month? Four. Okay. So how much per week? So how much per day? Twenty twenty five hundred divided by four. Divided by. Six. Seven. 25 sorry sorry <laughs> 20 2500 divided by seven yeah i don't know you're doing too much math for me uh i don't know what is that four or five hundred i'm gonna go four fifty. it's a little bit less than um it's a little like bit less than um no not 300 i thought it was a little less than four no, no, no. we ain't math guys bro <laughs> um, <laughs> you really tried to prove a point. Too. I was just trying to no, because <laughs> no, no, seriously, I know when you clear on that shit, when yeah. you all right. So if you want to make ten k a month, right? That would be um. So it'd be twenty five hundred. So it'd be twenty five hundred twelve fifty for fifteen days. Just do ten thousand divided by thirty. It'd be six something a week. No. Three hundred per day. 333 per day and with no cents. misses not a single miss mm. and 33 cents so okay you, when you take weekends out of that equation you know okay so then you're making your yeah your number needs to be if, higher if, if you want to take weekends out you know okay so you need to think about the fact that like you would need to reach a lot of people or do a lot of shit for like one person you know what i mean um that's 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 a lot of money i made i've made that amount of money i've made more but you know it's kind of weird because now i'm not making as much and i'm like hmm like 
that's a lot of fucking money. Yeah, it is. You know? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I can't believe I made that much. No. I think my record was like 12000 a month. That's good. That's good. Which is a lot of fucking money, dude. Yeah. And then uh, my third goal would be uh, moving out of my parents. Yeah. So you have a budget? It's on my to-do list. Okay, so you need a budget. I have one on my website. First 2024. I have a free budget on my website. <laughs> I'm not a financial <laughs> person. Know. Didn't like, know. I'm not a financial professional, yeah, but I don't know. it works. Yeah. I want to go to Hawaii for sure. I actually, I might have an opportunity coming up in February. Oh. Maybe, maybe we'll see if it happens. It happens. Mr. Motion. Um, oh. I'll, 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 do, I'll do 10K a month with <laughs> Mr. you. Mr. Motion like, is crazy. I like the 10K a month. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I just don't know where I want to move yet. So it's like, ah. Fuck, you don't have to know yet, bro. Yeah, you were saying I, yesterday. We're mad young. You're saying yesterday. I mean, I'm going you're, in a, you're in a quarter life crisis right now. Dude, no, I, but the I fact might just take my car and just go, like, like no destination in mind, and just no wait. City but can city, we can we normalize what you're doing though? Like traveling to like a different yeah. state and living there for a few months, and yeah. then like saying hey goodbye. But like I could still come and back whenever I want. Like, exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, what do you mean, normalize that? Normalize it like I wish more like people. Like, normalize it. Oh, normalize I wish it. more people. Like, why not, bro? I mean, I'm 25. I'm single. Like, I can do whatever I want. I have yeah. My business. Yeah. Like, nobody's holding me you back. You literally only live whatever but, I want. But I would say that at the same time, I want you to continue to share your message this year because yeah. not everybody is like you guys mm-hmm. and not like me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, not everyone is healthy, you know, business and financial and, yeah. and whatever savvy and they know their value and they know what their skill set is mm-hmm. and, and whatever. And it's still a grind for us. Like, we still, I mean, I'll speak for myself. Like, I still um, struggle to be that person and to continue because another Alex Hermosi quote is, you don't win business. You being successful in business is being able to continue to play the game. Yeah, exactly. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people could just do shit. There's no, like, there's but no who win. Who stays and I'm keeps done. doing it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, dude, it, have I shown you the video, the Valley of Despair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you start, you're like, dude, this is a crazy idea. Like, I'm gonna do so good. I'm gonna make so much money. I'm gonna make 10k a month, easy. This is the thought process. And then you get, you get years. here. You, you get to the next step, and it's like. This is a lot harder than I thought, but I'm still in for it. I still want to do it. I'm so committed. And then you get to the next step, and this is where everybody fucking quits. Yeah. Everybody quits because like it's like so much harder than you thought. Wait, but what do you? So you wait, hit you hit rock so, bottom. So it's pretty much a just graph like starting starting any shows. business, anything that you really want to do, even if it's like re- training for like a marathon. Yeah. Like you're like you get to the next step. It's just it's a like, thought process. Yeah, you're like this is hard, but like I'm still in for it. And then the next step is where everybody fucking quits. Oh, okay. Everybody quits there, and most people, they they actually do quit, and they don't get to this next step, which is on the way up. Like this is still hard, but like I'm I'm still doing it, and then the next step is like where you fucking made it. So most people quit right here. Oh, okay. In terms of the majority, when you said yeah. everyone, I was like, I was not like, a, all yeah, right, you're a, losing yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Because I was like, I'm not sure because there's still people that make it right. through. So how does yeah. that work? And I'm sure you probably went through that process in your business too, like yeah. when you first started out. And most people they just make this like they start here and they just make this circle right at the bottom. They because just, one of right one of the top. things that I really have to share before we end this podcast is that your business will not make like positive cash flow money where all of your debts and bills and all of your shit is paid off for like years not like a hundred years but at least for a few you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like you have to be prepared to work possibly a job on the side have a side hustle shout out to like instacart uber eats and all that like i've made mad money doing that shit on the side and i could take calls and i could talk to my family and talk to my girlfriend or whatever while i'm doing that it's guaranteed quick money yeah you're like fucking shoveling your time into the fucking fire but like still you know what I mean? My and phone that's just, why my it's, phone just died. And that's why it's important to have a purpose in life to push you through those times and also have a plan. That way you don't stray away from a, that plan in hard times. Because like I was telling Zach, even when working out, you don't want to negotiate when you're in hell. It, yeah. As a figure of speech. Exactly. But I, I guess one more thing. Because I'm just having so much fun. Oh, me too. Uh, I would just say that like yeah like getting to 10k per month is dope and doing whatever we want to do we have results we're all about results you know what i mean but at the same time in 2024 make your time valuable and important Mm -hmm. time is the only currency that you can't get back yeah 
Because yeah. you can be making all the money in the world, but what if, one, you have no time, and two, if you've made it and you have, you're have you sitting in that million-dollar mansion with all of your whatever the fuck you want or wherever, but you're with nobody. Mm-hmm. So find a balance. Yeah. Make that money. Yeah. Have that time. And also be healthy, but also like have good relationships in business and in personal. No, that's facts. Yeah. Cause you know, I'll, cause I'll add. I mean, money makes money exaggerates who you are. It doesn't make you who you are. And for me, I see money as a tool. So that's why I say ten thousand a month because it allows me to whatever be able to take care of my family or give my family good gifts this year or move out or do X Y Z. Gives me the time to not work a job to be able to try to focus on goals or whatever it may be. So that's my thought process. Yeah, this has been a great pod, man. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming here. Thank you to Zach and Jordan. It's I am I am Zach Day yeah, yeah. on Instagram and Jordan Casarubius on Instagram as well. <laughs> yes, sir. Right now, show it's been real. Thank you for having me. It's Carter McKinney on Instagram, Carter McKinney and McKinney Media. Please follow me. Love is free. Let's do it. I'll follow you back. We're See out. Hell yeah, bro. We're not awesome. playing uh, 2024. Awesome. We're coming for you. It's lit. And we're out. What's now? It's been great, bro. What? Right now. Show.